clarification. Your Honor. Ma'am, my name is Dick Harpugli, and I represent the man you know as Alex, right? Yes, sir, I met you before. I don't think we've ever met before, have we? Yes, we have. We've met? Yes, sir, at the house. Maggie's funeral. Oh, at Maggie's funeral, yes. Uh, I'm, I apologize. Um, a lot of people there that day. Yes, sir. Alex has always referred to you when people ask who you are as his friend, correct? That is correct. Never called you his housekeeper, keeper, right? That is correct. Uh, he always, when, when he introduced you as his friend. That is correct. Now, um, you've also, I think in multiple interviews with um, Sled and other folks, described, I think that the words were, um, Maggie was his all. Isn't that, didn't you, isn't that what you told Sled? Yes, sir. What does that mean, Maggie was his all? He... He adored her. He, well, he loved her. He adored her. Worshipped her. I mean, just treated her as somebody he adored, correct? Exactly, yes, sir. Now, I think they also asked you if you ever saw them have any arguments. And no, I did not ask that object objection. Can you restate the question, please. Sweat asked you if you'd ever seen them have any arguments. I don't quite understand the basic objection, Your Honor. You restated the question. You may respond. What was the question again, sir? Did you ever see them have any arguments? I never saw them have arguments. It was just minor disagreement because of the remodeling. And I think you cite specifically they had, when you said they had arguments, it was about the paint colors, for instance. One of them was Maggie was set on getting a certain white and Alec was saying, just get whatever white, basically. You know, he didn't care. She wanted a specific white and never, he just didn't uh, care. But you never saw them have any violent arguments or argue about money or argue about relationships. It was all the minor things that most couples go through, um, picking paint colors and those kinds of things. Is that correct? Yes, sir. To, to some, they would disagree on, it wasn't that they disagreed. The only thing that I remember Maggie saying was that she just wanted him to sit still and listen to her for at least 10 minutes at a time because he was always on the go. Is that an uncommon complaint between husbands and wives or wives to husbands? I want you to just listen to me, is that right? She just was, she would get frustrated because of that. Right, you ever tell your husband that, just listen to me, sit? Please. All the time. Okay. So um, let me talk a little bit about <coughs> the um, morning of the 7th. Yes, sir. And then the morning of the 8th, because I understand you left before um, Paul, Maggie, or Alec was on the Moselle property on the 7th, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And we're going to talk about those texts in just a minute between you and Maggie, but um, you fixed some dinner for them. I did. And did you set a table, or did they have to go get their own plates and put them no, out? No, I left the food on the stove. Right. Um, and, and normally, the next day, the pots would still be on the stove, right? Yes, sir. Would they clean up their plates or leave those in the sink, or how would that go? Sometimes uh, the plates would be in the living room. There was no plates in the living room. Um, they were in the sink. Okay, but when you got there on the morning of the 8th. The plates were in the sink. were in the sink. They were not in the living room. Okay, now, are you aware of how many people were in there, how many friends, law partners, his sister, who was in the Moselle house on the night of the 7th? No, sir. Okay, if I told you there were 12 to 15 of them, would that surprise you? I mean, Maggie and Paul just been killed. Was he very close with his law partners? Yes, sir. Okay, his sister, Lynn? Do you know Lynn? I don't, I, I met her at um, Maggie's, when Maggie passed. Okay. Um, and would it surprise you to know that the... Uh, Your Honor, I'm going to object. I'm going to ask her if she knows, Your Honor. 
Well, the objection is sustained. You cannot testify. Well, let me make it more general than this. Do you know if anyone that evening of those p people moved the food from the stovetop to the refrigerator? I don't know. Okay. Um, now let's talk a little bit about the um, the um, room, the, the, the bedroom, and well, let me ask you this. Let's back off just a little bit. You drove over from his mother and father's house, correct? That is correct. That morning, the 8th, to Moselle, right? Yes, sir. And instead of coming your normal way, which would have been the entrance by the kennels, where there, did you see all the police down there? No, sir, I did not. Okay. You drove up to the main entrance that would go straight up to the house, or if you took a right on that road, you'd end up back down at the kennels, right? Yes, sir. And you came up that, were there police around the, the, the house up there? Not around the house. Okay. Did anyone question whether you should go into the house or not? No, sir. Were there any, was there anybody in the house other than you? No, sir, it was me. So did you find it strange that this was a crime scene? Objection. And that, Need to hear the question. I'm sorry. The question would be, did you find it strange there was no law enforcement present at the house that morning? Yeah, question. Go ahead. It wasn't strange because there was law enforcement all over on the kennel side. It wasn't strange that they allowed me to go into the house. Well, let me ask you this. Did anybody from SLED show up while you were there that morning? I believe there was an officer. I do not recall the officers. Do you remember somebody coming in to search the house while you were there? There were several agents that came through. Right. But, okay, but you'd been there for a while before they got there? Yes, sir. Did they ask you about clothes you'd found, or did they ask you about anything that you found out of the ordinary, anything like that? I didn't ask any questions. They didn't ask me. They just went about doing what they were doing. And were they going from room to room? Were they looking for things under the bed? Do you, do you remember? It appeared that that's what they were doing, sir. Okay. But that was after you got there and picked up the bathroom, picked up the, 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 the no. towel? No, sir. I hadn't picked up anything at that point because I was still in shock and I was still trying to process what had just happened to my friend. So they would have seen the khaki pants on the floor. Objection. Did they go into the bathroom? I couldn't tell you, sir. Okay. The, ba the, the, the laundry room sits on the other side of the house, and I had to take some time to process what had happened to Maggie and Paul. I didn't, I know I saw agents that went upstairs to Paul's room. I, I saw them walking through the house, sir, but I don't, I don't know what they took, what they didn't took. All I can tell you is what I saw when I got there. Okay. After, while they're there or after they left, is that when you went into the bathroom and saw the khaki pants, somebody taking a shower, um, there was a towel on the floor, khaki pants on the floor. Was that before or after they left? Yeah, after. Okay. So all those items would have been, they would have been there for those folks to see as far as you know. Yes, sir. Now let me ask you a couple of things and, and, and about what you saw. The, the, they keep showing you this picture by the tree of Alex, and he appears to have on a khaki pair of pants in that picture, correct? Yes, sir. And um, I mean, he, I'm sure he had a number of different pairs of khaki pants, but were those khaki pants similar to the ones he has on in the picture? Could they be the same ones? They could be, but he had several. Right. Um, and in terms of um, somebody had taken a shower, it looked like there was water on the floor? Yes, sir. Now, did Alex take a number of showers every day? Was he a pro prolific shower taker? Not that I'm aware. He would get up in the morning, take a shower, and go to work. But did he take showers other times during the day? I wasn't there in the evening hours, so okay. I don't know. Okay. So, but it was not, wasn't unusual for when you got there to find a, a towel on the floor and water on the floor from him having, having taken that a That wasn't shower. unusual, no. Okay. And um, I think that when you were asked about a shirt, 
and we can pull this if you want to go back to, whether there was a shirt there also, you said you couldn't remember. Is that correct? With regard to? Whether there was a shirt with the khakis on the floor. You said I couldn't remember. I could not remember whether there was a shirt with a khaki pants. All I remember is a white damp towel sitting there. Okay, and the khaki pants. Yes, sir. But you don't remember the what, whether, and I think you told the grand jury, I don't remember whether it was a shirt or wasn't a shirt, correct? That is correct. And that's today. You can't tell this jury there wasn't a shirt on the floor. You just can't, you can tell them you don't remember, correct? What was your question? You can't tell this jury there wasn't a shirt on the floor because you can't remember whether there was a shirt on the floor or not. Isn't that what you told the grand jury? Yes, sir. Okay. So we know there's a pair of khaki pants. There may have been a shirt. Um, and those shoes, um, well, let me ask you this. Do you know on the night of the 7th? Yes, sir. Alec had left, correct? He wasn't there when you got there the next morning. No, sir, he wasn't there. Okay. And matter of fact, he never spent another night at Moselle that no, you sir, he did not. Honor. She knows, Your Honor. Can I answer if you know whether or not he's ever spent another night there? after the murders? Did he ever spend another night at Moselle, to your knowledge? He did not. So when he left that night on the night of the seventh and went to um, his mother and father's house, you don't know what clothes he took with him, what shoes he was wearing. You have no idea, correct? That is correct. Um, and um, were you aware that Sled had confiscated the clothes that he had on? At that moment, I didn't. Okay. Well, you are now. Yes, sir. I do know now. Okay. A white T-shirt, pair of shorts that he showed you, and um, whatever, uh, whatever shoes he had on, some sneakers, right? I didn't see the sneakers, but I saw the clothing items. Okay. And um, so he had to put on, if they did that, other clothes to go over his mother's house, correct? Objection. Would it stand to reason he'd have to put on other clothes or go in his underwear? I would assume so, yes. Okay. Do you know what he wore over at his mother's house? No, sir. Do you know whether he wore those shoes? No, sir. You don't know. So you don't we objection to objection. Basis for the objection. To which know. question? To that last one, shoes. I don't know what specificity he says to those shoes. I don't know what he's. I'm sorry. The shoes that you say you saw in the Snapchat photo, you say you never saw again. Right. That is correct. Okay. You don't know whether he, wrote, he uh, wore those shoes the night of the 7th over to his mama's house, do you? I don't know that. I wasn't okay. there. You don't know what he wore over there, correct? That's correct. I wasn't there. He may have even worn that shirt that you said you never saw again, correct? Objection. Objection is overruled. Right. Correct. Okay. Now, If somebody alleged that those khaki pants were was at what Alex was wearing the night of the... I'm going to object. I need to hear the question. I, I can't finish the question. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Let me state this. If somebody were to say that Alec Murdaugh, as ridiculous as it sounds, was wearing those khaki pants when he... Objection. Objection sustained. Let me put it this way. Did you see any blood on those khaki pants? No, sir. He washed them, right? <clears throat> yes, sir. Did you put anything on them to get blood stains out? I mean, uh, would there be... Are you being saying that I, that I removed blood stains off of khaki pants? I'm asking you rhetorically. I'm asking you, did, did you see any blood stains? There appeared to be no blood stains okay. on those pants. Okay. And in the bathroom... Did you see any bloody footprints? I did not. Did you see any blood on that towel? No, sir. Did you see anything indicating to you there had been anybody wearing bloody shoes or washing, off after, washing blood off or anything that would indicate that somebody, after a murder, had gone back to that room, changed clothes, covered in blood, uh, took a shower and changed Objection. clothes? Did you see anything that would indicate that? Objection is overruled. Go ahead. I've, this is the first time that I have ever been in a situation where somebody was murdered. Right. I didn't know 
as far as what you're asking me, if there was anything bloody in there, no, it did not appear to be anything bloody in there. Did you clean the shower that day? Yes, sir, I rinsed it off. You rinsed it off. Nobody told you not to rinse off the shower? No, sir. Okay. And again, nobody from SWED, as that group went through, asked you, you know, did you see bloody footprints? Did you see any evidence that there was anything bloody in that, sh that bathroom? <coughs> did anybody ask you that? No, sir. And your testimony is those khaki pants were there after SWED left? Yes, sir. And maybe even a shirt you can't remember? Yes, or possibly a T-shirt, but I did not see it. I, I don't remember. Okay, you don't remember what kind of shirt, if there was a shirt. Not objection. The objection is overruled. Thank you. Do you remember, you know, I'm doing like Mr. Meadows now, I forgot the question. But let me see if I can get this back on track. This, in, these interruptions are getting me a little askew. Um, so, I think you've already asked and answered that. Now, let's talk a little bit about let me talk a little bit about the cell phone service in Moselle. You had a cell phone? Yes, sir. And the servicer was who? What, what was it, Verizon? The, the cell phone carrier is Verizon, yes, sir. Okay. And so did you ever have any trouble getting a signal anywhere on the Moselle property, up at the house, down at the dog kennels? Was it sporadic? Yes, sir, it was. Okay. And sometimes you'd be talking to somebody and they'd drop off. Or you'd, you'd, the call would end not because you ended it, because the service was bad. Yes, sir, you were moving around in the house, certain areas, you could not get a signal. What about down from the kennels? It was, it was touch and go in the kennels. You, you really, you, you, once you got signal, you better stay where you were at, because if you moved, you were gonna lose your signal. Okay, so it would not, not be unusual at the kennels, if you did move, um, that if you were having a conversation or getting texts, or trying to answer a text, you wouldn't be able to do so. It, like I said, it depends on where you were. You kind of knew the areas. I, at least for me, I already knew that if I had to make a call or send a text, I would walk out the kitchen door straight to the edge of the corner right there on the porch and make my call and not move. If not, I would lose the call or I, w I would not be able to make my call. What about at the kennels? At the kennels, like I said, it depends on the area where you were at. And once basically everybody we all kind of knew that if you moved out of a certain area and went to another you were going to lose signal okay now at the kennel do you know what area you could get a call keep that i mean was there a, you just talked about up at the house there was a sweet spot if you'll pardon, yes sir. Pardon my language. was there a sweet spot down at the kennel or do you know I, I'm not I'm not sure at the kennels, but I do remember um, Mr. C B saying that the signal out there was horrible um, for making calls or getting calls. For making sending texts or getting texts. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Now <clears throat> um, let me let me talk to you a little bit about this conversation in August of of twenty one after the murders. Yes, sir. Mr. Uh, Al came over and uh, was inquiring of you what shirt he had on that day, correct? It didn't feel like he was inquiring. It felt more like he was trying to convince me of the shirt that he was wearing. Did he tell you that he just finished? Objection. I'm sorry. I'm just asking if he told you something. Objection. It's cross-examination. Uh, not objecting to hearsay for the record. I need to hear the question. Um, Did, uh, number I'm, one. Uh, number two is cross-examination. Go ahead. Did he tell you that he just finished Objection. meeting? Do you want me to pose the question, Your Honor, or not? All right. I'm going to send the jury to the jury room. Please do not discuss the case.
Oh, be seated. Okay, what is the question? Just wait one second, Your Honor. Let me see if I can get back on track. When you were talk talking with him in the Little House in August, as we were talking about a moment ago, and he was talking about the shirt, did he tell you that he had just been interviewed by Swed, who'd shown him the Snapchat photo, and he was uh, attempting to figure out what he was wearing that day? I mean, it's in a photo. Did he tell you that? What's the specific question? Did he, in the con in, in, when he asked you the question about the shirt, did he tell you he'd just come from being interviewed by Sweat? No, sir, he didn't tell me that. Um, and what is the objection? Your Honor, it is respectfully it's hearsay. Statement is hearsay that if he wants to do that, he can take the stand and do it. He's trying to offer the defendant's statement without him taking the stand. It's offered for the truth of the matter asserted. That's my objection. All right, and response. Uh, my response is, if you can't ask witnesses about what the defendant said to them, you're going to have a rough, rough, rough road to hoe going forward because um, it's a statement by the party, um, a party opponent, if you will. I think they argued earlier on when we objected to one. It's not hearsay. There's an exception to hearsay by a statement by one of the parties. It's Alex. Statement by the party opponent being a, a statement by the party opponent, uh, the defendant. Mr. Murdoch's statement to this woman. Not for this matters. I've been doing this 35 years. He's on trial. Uh, we know uh, that. Um, but I'm just saying it's, it's not a party opponent. He's trying to get in a statement from the defendant. Uh, statements against interest that the state, there is a difference between the state asking what the defendant said and the defense. And if they hadn't objected to some, they thought that's their prerogative, but they're trying to offer the defendant's statement in evidence without him taking the stand. And, and it, I, I respectfully think that's objectable as hearsay. He's the defendant on trial. They're offering it for the uh, self-serving hearsay. Uh, they're offering it for the truth of the matter asserted. And I respectfully think that he's got to stand, take the stand and get that information in. And your honor, maybe I'll make this simple. What would your answer to that question be now? Did he tell you about talking to Sweat that day? No, sir, he did not. Okay. And your honor, 801 D2 allows us to ask the question and not the defense. I don't understand what the self serving is. She didn't say anything. He didn't say anything about Sweat. Your honor, he could get his whole case through witnesses and he wouldn't have to take the stand. I, I, Absolutely. And that's not got appropriate. A Fifth Amendment right no, sir. to not take the stand. That's right. But you can't. I think Brent will let you all debate the issue between the two. I apologize, I'll Your Honor. I get that. All right.
up your order. You may now be seated. The objection is sustained, it's sheer say. You bring the jury. All right, thank you. The objection is sustained. Your next question. Support, Your Honor. Yes, sir. So um, this conversation occurred, I think, did you say prior to them going on a golf tournament, going to a golf tournament? Yes, sir. He said okay. Randy had just dropped him off so that he could get his clothes because they were him and Buster and Randy were going golfing. Him and Buster and who? Randy. Randy, yeah. okay. We're going to a golf tournament that weekend. I don't know if it was a golf tournament or what, but I know he said they were going away. They were going golfing. Okay. Um, and speaking of Buster, um, can you point Buster out in the uh, audience for me, please? Buster, where? Oh, you're back there. Okay, I'm sorry. Stand up, please. Yes, sir. Is that Buster? Yes, sir. Okay, you all always had a great relationship, right? Yes, sir. Okay, He's thank a good you. kid. I'm sorry? He's a good kid. He's a good kid. Okay, so um, one of the other questions I have is, do you ever see Paul with any guns? Yes, sir. No? Yes, sir. I'm sorry. And did he have guns around all the time? Yes, he did. Matter of fact, there are all guns all over that place, right? In the vehicles, on the go-karts, sometimes in the hangar. So, um, did uh, Paul ever leave guns? Just where, if he was, for instance, down at the uh, uh, the hangar, would he ever leave guns down there? I have found one occasionally out there. A pistol or a rifle? A rifle. You know what kind it was? No, sir. Okay. And um, do you know if he ever left any down in the feed room? Not in the feed room. I, I'm not sure you, about you, the feed okay, room. You never saw anything in the no, feed sir. room. Um, I believe I, in one of your statements I read that sometimes he'd leave him somewhere and those, the, actually there'd be rust on the rifle or the shotgun or whatever. If he left it on the, on the golf cart outside, he would sometimes leave it laying across and I would get it in the morning and already the dew would, it would rust off. And that would be a golf cart he would drive down to the kennels, for instance? Yes, sir. Whichever one he was in, and he preferred the gas. The gas one is usually where I used to find gas. Go uh, golf, golf cart. cart. Yes. Okay. And so that would be a way he would get down to the um, kennel sometimes. Sometimes, the majority of the time, he was either either in Dolly or in his own truck. In what? Dolly. What is Dolly? Um, the F two fifty. I forgot. Y'all name all your trucks, or they named all their trucks, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so um, most of the time he would be in a truck, but sometimes he would take the uh, golf cart, if you will, down there. Yes, sir. And apparently sometimes he had guns in the golf cart. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, now, let me touch a couple of other things. Um, did uh, that day you saw the sled folks in there, um, did 
You see them taking any pictures? Or do you remember? I believe some of them were taking pictures, but I'm not, I'm not positive. Okay. Um, you were shown a picture of a rain jacket? Yes, sir, I was. Okay. And had you ever seen that rain jacket at the house? Not at Moselle, no, sir. Correct. You ever, um, and what size clothes did, um, did Alec wear? 2XL. 2XL, not just a large. Would anything a large fit him? I don't think he had, he might have had one or two items that were that size, but most of the clothing was 2XL. 2XL. Um, how about, would you put uh, exhibit number? Yes, please. And blow it up for me, please. Okay, how, how about make that bigger for me, please? No, no, not the rain jacket. I'm sorry, the um, um, Snapchat picture. I apologize. Well, wait one second. Do you see that rain jacket on there? Yes, sir. That's, you've never seen that, according to your statement, never seen that at first. I've never seen that jacket. Okay. And you knew pretty much everything, every piece of clothing that was there, right? For the most part, yes. Yes. Okay. And how many rain jackets did, uh, did uh, Alex have? you remember? Too many to count. Too many to count. Okay. <laughs> but none of them looked like that. No, sir. Okay. How about blow that up for me, please? Can you make it any, any better, closer? Yeah, that's good right there. Um, and that shirt is, is that the one he was wearing that morning? When he no, sir, it was not. It's not? No, sir, that was not the shirt he was wearing. And this is at 7, you understand this is 7.40 p.m. Uh, that evening when he's out with Paul. I wasn't there then. Okay. But that's not the shirt he was wearing when he left that morning. That is correct. And that was not the shirt. Okay, thank you, course, indulge just one moment. He had clothes at his office, kept clothes at his office? Yes, sir, among other places. Where else would he leave, have car. clothes? Car. He have it in a car? Yes, sir. Where else? Um, in Edisto. I'm sorry? In Edisto. In Edisto, okay. But if he was in the Moselle area, if he was going to change his shirt from in the morning, would he have changed it at the office or got something out of his car? I you don't know I don't know okay I, I don't. okay um, now let me uh, show you Tell the jury what that is, please. The text messages from me and Maggie. Okay, and this is on uh, June 7th, 2021, right? That is correct. And the first one, I'm just going to try to hurry this up a little bit. She asked you to stop. Yes, sir. She says, will you stop by, this is at 7.05 a.m., stop by the store and get Alex Capri son. He likes orange and pineapple flavor plus mountain cooler. Thank you, I'll pay you back. You say, I will. She says, thank you, get two boxes. Now, after that conversation, uh, there's a text it's at 3.28 p.m. Blanca, dinner's on the stove, just left. So you left there um, at about 3.30, correct? 
Yes, I sent the text before um, I actually walked out of the house. I had a habit of sending her the text, make sure everything, and then locked up before I left. Okay. But at that time, I, would, I had gone upstairs to drop off some clothes, um, and um, I noticed that Paul's truck or a white truck was sitting at the kennels, so I left the, do the front door unlocked at that time okay. instead of locking it. But you didn't see Alex anywhere there? Right. No, sir. Okay. You didn't see his vehicle? No, sir. Okay. And she says at 340, thank you, right? Yes, sir. Okay, then at 354, you said, you're welcome. I just made your deposit. Maggie then says, I guess this is a fun exchange. Thank you. I'm waiting at the doctor. Alex wants me to come home. I had to leave the door open at Edisto, but trust the Mexicans to shut and lock for me. Yes, sir. Um, and then she says, Alex's dad back at the hospital. The, doc the last doctor claims not cancer pneumonia. Alex is about to die. Hope he doesn't go down there to sleep. Now, you know what she meant by that? What she meant was she used to, Maggie used to get frustrated. She said every time something happened at Almeida with his dad or his mom that Alec would get called and nobody else, that they always called Alec to go to the house. And she did get upset over that, that the family was basically putting all that on Alec and he wasn't getting enough rest. So when she said he's going to die, she's worried about his health. She was worried about his health, yes. Okay. Um, and she says Alex needs to take care of himself as well. And that's consistent with what you just said, correct? She's yes. worried about his health. Yes. Um, and you said, yes, he does. He told me he was tired when he left. I hope they can treat Mr. Randolph. Maggie says, I'm scared for him and Alex and all of us. What do you mean by that? Because Alec hadn't had much sleep. They, that was her main concern was the fact that, her main frustration was the fact that in the middle of the night or whenever, you know, if Mr. Randolph or Ms. Libby were uncomfortable that they would always, she seemed to think that they always called Alec and there goes Alec, you know, to take care of it. And she felt that it wasn't fair that he was the only one having to take him. And, and your response to that is, I know, just pray about it and hope he gets a little better. Is that what you said? Yes, sir. Okay. And, and you say, Alex and you really need to relax. Always being on the go with little uh, or no sleep is not healthy. Remember, I have a doctor's appointment in the morning in Buford. If I get done early, I'll go to Moselle. I'll let you know. And she says, no worries, right? Yes. Um, now, oh, you got the exhibit. Let me take that from you and hand it to uh, okay. So, <clears throat> She preferred to be in um, Edisto, correct? That's correct. Um, but she was going that day, based on your, all your texts, she was going because Mr. Randolph had been put back in the hospital and she was worried about Alex, right? I mean, she was heading to Moselle. She preferred to be in Edisto, but she was heading to Moselle because Mr. Randolph had been put back in the hospital and she was concerned about Alex. Isn't that what this is? The objection is sustained. Okay. Um, she, she indicated to you that Paul was coming in your telephone conversations, correct? That is correct. And did she indicate in your telephone conversations uh, that she needed dinner for her, Paul, and Alec, right? Yes, she did. And did she indicate in any way um, that she did not want to go to Moselle to have dinner with Alec Paul um, that night. Her conversation with me was that Alec wanted her to go to Moselle that day, and she was concerned about the workers that she had in Edisto, and she would have preferred to be in Edisto, taking care of the final but for details. But for Mr. Randolph's condition. She was, she was concerned about the work being done and leaving the house open in Edisto. 
She wasn't concerned about Mr. Randolph. I mean, she was, I mean, but her concern, more concern was that her house was open. Okay. Now, um, I mean, she preferred to be at Edisto <laughs> in the summertime as opposed to Moselle at all, correct? That is correct. Um, now, um, let me ask you, um, did SWED ask you about the, at any point, about the clothes that uh, Alex was wearing on the 7th? At some point, did they ask you that? Not until recent. Recently, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And um, <clears throat> is it clear uh, to you, I mean, you've been asked recently to re recollect something that happened in June of 21, um, which is almost two years ago. Um, is it, it, did, they, did they ask you other questions about what happened on June 7th when they asked you about the clothes? They asked me where I was. Um, they asked me what I was doing. They asked me when I saw Alec leaving that day, my discussions with Maggie. They requested to see my phone, which I gave them um, so they could see the text messages phone calls that we had had. Okay. Um, you and Maggie were very close. We were. You and Alex were close also, were you not? Yes, sir. Um, and did you feel like a member of the family? Yes, sir. Um, had you ever heard uh, from anybody about any, th well, strike that. Did you indicate that Maggie, one of the things Maggie told you was that she was not, after the boat case, she was not being treated very well by the people in Hampton, correct? That is correct. Um, they shunned her, they were rude to her, those kinds of things. That is correct. Did she also indicate to you that, that, that she was concerned about Paul because he'd received a bunch of threats? Objection. You're talking over with them. Did she ever indicate to you she's concerned about Paul because Paul had received threats? Yes. Okay, beg the court's indulgence. I moved 107 into evidence. Did you got it? Is it up there? I gave it to the court. Any objection? Oh, I think I want to say no objection. without objection. same morning of the 8th did you clean the gun room I didn't go in the in the gun room I went I went in there but I didn't do anything in the gun room didn't pick anything up no sir okay and when you went into the kitchen that morning was there anything that would indicate to you that other people had been there the night before like glasses or bottles of water or anything no sir okay thank you Mr. Harputley and just got a couple questions. Mr. Harputley and ask you about the um, clothes in the closet on June 8, 2021. You remember? Yes. And he asked you if there could have been another shirt in the room. 
Yes, sir. And was your response maybe maybe a t-shirt? Yes, sir. Okay. Did you see another dress shirt there? No, sir. Okay. And while we're getting to that, did you work at Almeda? No, sir. Did you ever go there? No, I have been there on one occasion previously, and I don't remember what I had to drop off. Well, that blue um, poncho rain jacket, Mr. Arpudlin, show you, was, that was at Almeda, wasn't it? Or do you know? I don't know where that came from. But you never saw that at Moselle, correct? That is correct. Okay. And state seven. Well, first of all, this is states two. States three oh six. Have you ever seen that shirt again since you went back the eighth? The ninth until today, have you ever seen that shirt again? No, sir. Once I um, moved all a lot of the belongings to the little house, um, he had packed some of the clothes up. But over the weekends and stuff, when they were going from place to place, they, I noticed that he was purchasing different clothing items, shorts, shirts. So there was a couple of new ones in there, which. Um, still was not that shirt it was a lot of some of the newer ones who was purchasing purchase, purchasing a lot of shorts and shirts alec after this event after after the murder yes sir on the weekends when when they were gone with the family um if he was going different places he would come back like that monday or tuesday and it was like new items within the clothes new shirts new shirts new shorts yes okay. you know what kind Vineyard vines. They were buying mini vines? Yes, sir. After the murders? Yes, sir. They were like polo type vineyard vines. And what shirt had he suggested to you he was wearing in August on this day? What shirt had he had just suggested to you he was wearing? Vineyard vines. Vinny vines is what he called them. In, in State 7, did you recognize these shorts and shirts? Yes, sir. Where was this shirt kept on States 107 in, in Moselle? In the, in the closet, if there was no room in that drawer. On the shelves? Yes, sir, on the shelf. And looking at 306, is that outfit different from this outfit? Yes, sir, it is. And I think it's Star Puglian showed at 107. Whose idea was it for Maggie Murdoch to come to Moselle on the evening of June 7th? Objection, Your Honor. You can testify if you know. Your Honor, here's that. You can testify if you know. Maggie texted me that Alec wanted her to come to Moselle. And is that on 107 that Mr. Harpootley had just put in? Yes, sir, it is. That's all, thank you. Further? Just a couple of Um, just a, a couple of questions. Um, after Maggie's death and Paul's death, did you notice he was losing weight? Yes, sir, he was. Dramatic loss of weight, right? Yes. So the clothes he, I mean, we can see him in that picture. He's a, fat is a long word, but overweight kind of guy, big guy, fleshy looking guy right there. Okay. Now the, um, so he needed to buy new clothes because the other clothes were falling off of him, right? I 
I assume so. Yes, sir. So it wouldn't be unusual for him to need to buy new cars because he's losing weight. I guess. Okay. Now, this is um, 306. This is the picture. Um, and you say this is a shirt, like a Columbia shirt, right? Yes, sir. Now, a Columbia shirt, don't they have a logo that says Columbia? Yes, sir. You don't <laughs> the sleeve or... You, you see one on here? I don't, I don't see anything on the shirt. I'm okay. to style a shirt is a Columbia style okay. shirt. That's, that's not a... You're, t you're not saying it was a brand name Columbia shirt. You're saying it was a Columbia style shirt? Yes, sir. Okay. And um, your testimony, again, is this is not the shirt he walked out with that morning. He did not walk out with that shirt that morning. But those could be the khakis he walked out with that morning. Possibly, yes. Okay. And when you say you never saw that shirt again, you did see those khakis again, did you not? Yes, sir. I washed those khakis. They were in the bathroom. I'm assuming it was the same pair because he only had a few that he wore. Right. Okay. And um, in addition, um, your testimony would be that the only well I guess you're saying that morning he didn't have that shirt on but he had those pants on could possibly have those pants he had several okay um, and would you scroll down to the footwear please okay those are loafers right yes sir and what do they seem to be made out of like soft leather so uh, your testimony is that he those were house shoes he only wore around the house he had like house slippers usually when alec would go outside he had them georgia boots that he would wear or the duck boots and those would be left by the front door when i would walk through the door in the next morning in june it was pretty hot down there in moselle Yes, sir, but those were his go-to shoes okay. when he would go um, outside or mess around, like he said, with Paul that day. What kind of shoes was he wearing when he went to work that day? The dress shoes, a pair of uh, brown leather. Okay. Now, when were you first asked about what he was wearing that day? Um, a couple, maybe a couple of days. When they interviewed me. When they interviewed you the first time. Yes, sir. They asked you what he had on. Yes, sir. Okay. You may step down.